Pastor Larry. Boy, does he ever deserve this honor. I want to say how excited I am to be here amidst such great company. I am so humbled to be here with you these following days or this session right now. There's four things that I can say I can give <laughs> great thanks to the life I have today. I love my life. I have the most amazing life filled with health and happiness, a great husband, wonderful children, the work I love to do, and I owe it to four things. My relationship with God, who's got my back, who has given me this life that I have and the intelligence that I hold. My father, who taught me how to use my mind and my inner processes to create and live the life of my design. My husband, who supports me in so many ways, emotionally, financially, and loves me with all his heart and soul as I love him. And chiropractic for giving me my life back. <laughs> I want to thank you guys. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for chiropractic, I wouldn't be here today doing the things I love to do with the energy, the vitality, the strength, with the joy that I'm able to enjoy my life with. You guys rock. You guys rock. And you're going to go far, farther than you have already. It's quite amazing the journey you all have taken. And you're going to go farther, faster, if you come together with one unified mind and move forward in a direction that you create for yourself. You see, at the very root of your thoughts, your attitudes, your beliefs, what you fear, how deeply you love, as to how you're going to move forward and create this great life for yourself or not create such a great life for yourself, at the very root of your joy and your sadness, is mind. No doubt about that. It's a fact. It's mind. Your mind encompasses all those things, as well as things like resources, such as compassion and patience and caring and love. Resources such as courage and confidence and drive, persistent tenacity. All of that is within you. And your life is that expression of what goes on inside. Your life is an expression of your mind. And all that goes on inside of you is a cause that motivates your actions and your behaviors. Things like who you're going to be hanging around with or socializing with. Things like how you're going to love your family, your spouse, your children. How you're going to respect your partners, your assistants, your coworkers, and patients on whether you're going to have one extra donut, one extra drink, one more pill, on whether you're going to spend your day out there at the casinos or in here elevating your talents and your skills and your knowledge about how to have the best practice ever. Within you is the very reason why you are the way you are right now. And your, the, your life is the expression of all of that. During this session, we're going to learn a few things. What if I told you that you can upgrade three things really simply? And by upgrading those three simple things, you will be able to upgrade how you use your mind and the quality of your mind. Would you want to know more about that? Yes. yes. What if I told you about, that by upgrading your mind by those three simple things or changes, not only will you learn how to master your mind more, but you'll learn how to, how to master your life even better. Is that something you want to learn? 
Well, that's what we're going to do today. We'll do that. We'll have a little group activity. We'll jot down some thoughts, and we'll have two short little meditations that are so easy to do, but yet so powerful. Powerful because they're infused with energy, emotions, imagery, and they're easy to use because all you've got to do is internalize your focus with a purpose in mind. You see, meditation, modern day meditation, like the Silva promotes, doesn't take a long time to learn or practice. You're doing it already. But you need to learn how to do it the right way. Well, when we talk about mastering your mind, we're talking about working with all that that is invisible, intangible, subjective. All that is the greater part of who you are, quite frankly. You can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell the body. You can open it up and look inside. You can get microscopes and look at cells and go even farther than that. But you can't see, hear, taste, touch, or smell the mind, can you? Although you know you've got it nor the emotions, nor your thoughts, or your spirit. And even then, at the very core of who you are, as a physical being, you're invisible and intangible. You're spiritual in nature. And your mind is quite interesting because it serves as a focusing faculty for your intelligence to be able to attune itself far and near. Like your eyes can focus far away and close by, that's what your mind allows your intelligence to do, to focus far and near through time or dimensions. You can focus on past memories if you wish and neutralize old traumas. You can focus on current projects if you'd like and enhance them even better. You can focus on the future that you want to create. There is no boundaries to where your mind can go or your intelligence. You can focus within yourself and teach your patients to focus within themselves to assist the healing process, to imagine their heart, their lung, their spine getting healthier and stronger every day as the days go by. That's the very basis of psychoneuroimmunology. The influence your mind and your psyche has over your immune system, over your body. And it goes farther than that. The impact is even greater. All my life I spend in all things mind. I grew up in a unique family with a father who had no formal education from very humble beginnings. Yet, he developed the most practiced modern day method of meditation throughout the world. It was very unique times for us. As children, he started with hypnosis and, and parapsychology, and he went on to psychology, and then he dabbled into things like meditation, all forms of meditation, brain research, electroencephalography, and he practiced with his children every step of the way. <laughs> It was kind of fun, actually. I mean, my brothers, sisters, and I, I mean, we had a lot of fun being hypnotized just about every single day of our lives. <laughs> there was 10 of us, so I guess you could say we were first guinea pigs. But the interesting thing is that some people were really terrified of this, this practice of his. I didn't know anybody else in the neighborhood who was doing this with their children or anywhere on the planet for that matter. And some people are fascinated by this. I remember as a young girl going to church, as we did every Sunday, and from the pulpit, the priest would say, and do not go to that man's house, for he is working with the devil. I would just cuddle up to my dad, thinking it was a guy behind us. <laughs> Never in my mind would I, did I think it was a guy next to me. Yeah, they were fun times, all right. With positive negative hallucination age regressions, age progression, seeing pink elephants in the middle of your living room. Great fun. But the question begs to be asked, why? Why in the world would a man use hypnosis on his children? The answer is simple. Because he knew. He knew 
that if they learned to use more of their mind and their internal processes, they had a better chance of success. All he wanted for his children was for them to grow, to be happy and thrive. What better definition for success can you have than to grow, be happy, and to thrive? See, success is interesting, isn't it? Because anytime you think of what you want to do in the future as success, and think about your practice, for instance, think about your life, think about your love, your relationships, anytime you want to make anything better, that is a goal. And as you set your goals, as you move forward, you begin to realize that all a, a success is, is the accomplish, accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. That's a great goal to have. And it's up to you to define success for yourself because we're all different. It's your birthright to define that. And I also believe it is your birthright to have it what? All. I don't hear that too loud. Let me hear it again. It is your birthright to have it? All. And nothing less. It is your birthright to have it all. Health and wealth and wisdom and happiness and great relationships, joy, everything. And we want to start thinking about what is it then that it takes to reach and, and actually actualize these goals, this goal of success, this goal where you will find yourself happy and thriving. Dennis Waitley says that the reason most people never reach their goals is because they don't properly define them or ever consider them as believable or achievable. Winners, on the other hand, they know where they're going. They know what they'll be doing along the way and who's going to be sharing the adventure with them. Do you know where you're going? What you're going to be doing along the way and who's going to share your adventure? The fact is that if someone came up to you right now and actually saw you, what would they say about you? How would they determine who you are and your level of success? Would they say you're successful? not too successful? Would they say that, that you're like a really cool person or you're smart and sharp and have got it together? Or they say you're kind of like antisocial, grumpy and snobby. What would they say about you? Think of people you've met since you've been here. What is your impression of them? Because quite frankly, first impressions are made within the first 10, 15 seconds that we meet, if not sooner than that. What are first impressions, or what are the first impressions you're relaying outward to the people around you, to your patients, to your loved ones? Because quite frankly, you are a walking, talking billboard. Isn't that the truth? You are a walking, talking billboard, and you can't help it. Because you are so transparent. There's so many things about you that really tells the world at large who you are, what you believe in, what your attitude is, what your expectations are, what you, everything. Take your body, for instance. If someone walked up to you and just took a look at you, what would they say about you? That you love yourself? That you respect yourself? That you care about you? That you walk your talk? What would they say? What does your success look like? Because unless you have this very really clearly defined goal, you're not going to get there. There's a saying that says, clear pictures, clear outcomes, but fuzzy pictures, fuzzy outcomes. Everything that happens outside of you is the result of what's going on inside of you. So I'm going to ask you to do something. Get a pen, a pen out right now and something to write on. You also have an e-book that uh, you can access that you can also utilize for your later work. Come on, I don't see your pieces of paper coming out or pens. 
and write a detailed paragraph describing what your success looks like. Now, be very detailed. How do you walk and talk? Who do you socialize with? How, how much are you earning? How much money do you have in the bank? What is your health like, the tone of your body? What about the way that you relate to others? What are you driving? What about your love life? What about your family? Who are the friends you hang around with? Make it as detailed as possible. Make it as clear as possible. You have three minutes. Start right now. Couldn't do that and say a good spine. you must be amazingly successful already. Congratulations. And you have nowhere else you want to go. You've reached your limit, you've reached your max. Very nice. You have another two minutes. Come on, be detailed about this. Check your emails or text people. Those of you who are really mean business, I can see it. All right. Right faster. if you're done writing. Put a vacation in there, trip around the world, brand new car, whatever. Just be clear about it. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Good. So you've got an idea as to where you want to take your life, your relationships, your, your practice, everything, because that's what this whole little exercise is all about, and that you surely can go back and flesh it out some more. But the fact remains that nothing is going to change unless you upgrade how you think, your attitudes, and your beliefs, because that is going to be the very thing that's going to fuel your actions and your behaviors. The one thing that we can do to start upgrading your thoughts is to pay attention to them, because how you speak is a reflection of what you're thinking of what you're believing and about your attitudes as well. You are so transparent. You are revealing yourself every time you open your mouth. How you speak reveals whether you're positive or negative, whether you're optimistic or pessimistic. It reveals whether you're smart or not so smart. If you're a nice guy or not a nice guy. It is so revealing. It just, it just tells everything about you. You're an open book and so transparent. And no matter how hard, how hard you try to hide it, it doesn't happen. The words that you use really are a pattern of thinking that is so ingrained in you that we don't always notice that pattern. People say, oh gosh, I'm really positive. You know, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want my marriage to fall apart. You see how positive I am? See. I think the intention is there, but the understanding of how the brain and mind work in relation to the universe and where all things come is not. I believe in the universe. I believe in that wonderful energy that existed since probably before the Big Bang, that is intelligent, creative, that responds to my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, my images, my intentions. 
that allows me to create the life that I'm living, I believe in that energy. And when we speak, we speak in ways that, that these words are transformed into feelings, emotions, and images that communicate with that field from where all things come. That field is where everything comes from. You and me, our children, the, the floor that you see, the building, the design of this whole stage, everything was someone's thought before it became a physical reality. And that's the way it is with your life. But when we start saying things like, I don't want to be sick, what is the only picture that can be created from that statement if it's not a picture of you being sick? The universe says, my gosh, why are you always complaining? Here, it's more sick. You keep saying it. I keep giving it to you. Why are you always complaining? Do you know how it is with your patients? When they come in, they're feeling so badly and they feel so sick and their focus is only on illness. And they keep getting more of that illness. See, I don't want to be miserable and all you find is misery because the only picture you can create in your mind is that of you being miserable. And the universe keeps giving you more, more misery. I don't want to be broke. I don't want my practice to fail. I don't want to go bankrupt. And you see you're practicing failing more and more every day. But that's the message you're giving out to the universe from where all things come. The universe does not discriminate. It's like gravity. Because you jump off the building doesn't mean you're not going to fall and break every bone in your body. Of course you are. It does not discriminate. It gives you what you want. Real value. You need to understand the dynamics between how you think and how you relate that to the universe at large from where your life is being crafted. You're in charge of that. You can make that happen. How much better would it be just to make a simple modification, start saying what you really mean and say, you know what, I get it. I want to be healthy. I want to be strong. I want my marriage to thrive, to be supportive and loving. I want my business to be hugely successful. That's what I want. And then the universe says, my goodness, why didn't you tell me this sooner? We could have done this a long time ago. And it's not that you don't want to do it. It's often because you don't understand or know how to go about doing it. It may be a very simple concept, but you know what it is? But the moment you begin to upgrade how you think, your attitudes and your beliefs, you're going to upgrade every single thing about your life, everything. Because how you think is at the core of everything you do. And the quality of your thoughts will result in the quality of your life. Simply put, thought precedes manifestation. First you think it, and then you actualize it. It doesn't happen the other way around. You walked in here and you said, where am I going to sit? Hmm, right there. Okay, found it. What am I going to wear today? What am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to have for dinner? And you are masters, masters of thought manifestation. You do it every single, time, every single day, day in and day out. And when you set your mind on it, you make it happen. You say, oh, yeah, sure. You know, finding a seat is easy. Really? Easier than what? Getting rid of a tumor? Easier than what? Doubling your income and tripling it? Easier than what? You know what the difference is? The difference is that you believe you can find the chair or you believe that you'll get what you want to order, but you don't believe that you're going to double your income or get rid of that tumor or do whatever else. It is. And we'll touch upon beliefs in a few moments. But it's really easy to upgrade your way of thinking, to say what you mean, to focus on the positive, on things that are going to open doors of opportunity, not close them. All you need to do is be, be willing to recognize that what you're thinking or believing or the attitude that you hold is not a good one. That it's a negative attitude, a negative belief, a negative thought. Because once you recognize it, you have the power to change it. You change it, you say cancel that thought, cancel, cancel, and you immediately, you substitute it with a more positive one. You say, oh gosh, I am so stupid. Oop. Is that a quality you want to have? Because the more you repeat that, the more true it's going to be. If you keep saying that, 
Because we have this, this instrument that's so programmable, and repetition programs this instrument to perform in the way that it's been programmed. He said, cancel, cancel, I'm not stupid, I'm brilliant, I'm a genius, I can make great things happen. When you say things to yourself like, it'll never happen, is that a positive thing? No. Cancel, cancel. And we immediately say, you know what, there's a lot of reasons why it should happen and can happen and will happen. And it will happen for me. To say something negative like, oh, it tickles me to death, <laughs> even that's not positive. Because it actually has happened. People have actually <laughs> been tickled to death. It breaks my heart. You know, I used to work at a hospital to give presentations to the heart transplant unit because my brother-in-law is a heart recipient and in Austin, Texas. And I would give workshops to heart recipients and I would mention about, about statements like my heart you know, it skips a beat you know, or, or it breaks my heart or it, uh, it, it, you know, anything about the heart that was not positive and their heads would go, yeah, you're right. Cancel those thoughts. I have a vibrant heart that is functioning in a normal, healthy, rhythmic manner that's going to carry me in the most healthy way the rest of my life. So what you're going to do right now is that you're going to not only be observant of others and how they speak, and please, I don't want you to go around saying, cancel, cancel to everybody you hear, <laughs> say something negative, but I do want us to agree amongst ourselves as a group, as colleagues, as friends, as family, that you will support each other <clears throat> along the way in helping each other to upgrade the way they think by upgrading how they speak. Deal? Okay, so what you're going to do, stand up. Stand up. Everyone stand up and tell as many people as you can for one minute. Just tell them, you have my permission to call me out when I say something negative and thank you very much. That's it. Tell every... to call me out if I see something negative. You have my permission. Okay, guys, it's turning to a social event, so give each other a high five and sit back down in your seat. High five and sit back down. Thank you very much. Now, it's up to you to help support each other along the way. Because if you all plan to move forward as, you, as I know that you do, in the most positive of manners, it takes that mentality. One that opens doors of opportunities and make great things happen. The other thing you want to focus on are your attitudes. Your attitude, how happy you choose to be. And your attitude reveals how you feel about everything. And the moment you open your mouth, again, you're revealing your attitudes about life, love, about your work, about your relationships, about your expectations, dreams, desires, everything. Pastor Charles Swindle said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. To me, attitude is more important than facts, than education, than past, than money, than what people think, do or say, than successes or failures. An attitude will make or break a company, a church, a home, or a relationship. The remarkable thing is, he continues to that the one thing you have every day is a choice regarding the attitude that you will embrace for that day. You cannot change the past. You cannot change the fact that people will act a certain way. You cannot change the inevitable. The only thing you can do 
is play on the one string you have, and that is your attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react. And so it is with you. You are in charge of your attitude. Now, my, let's be realistic here. The only thing you need to do to shift your attitude is desire it. Become aware of that negative attitude because your attitude will cause ripples that will move out to everyone and impact everyone because we're all connected. There's no way around it. And because we all are connected to each other in some way, those ripples will, will reach them and impact them in ways that are not very good if it's a bad attitude. Your choice is to shift it. To be honest with, with yourself, what is causing this attitude of me? Is it that I feel lesser than? The belief that I'm not good enough or smart enough, sharp enough? Is it my inferiorities? Because really, quite frankly, you might point that finger of blame anywhere you want. Oh, it's because of the economy. Oh, it's because of my profession. Oh, it's because of my wife or my husband or whatever it might be. But in all reality, you have three fingers pointing right back at you. It has nothing to do with what's out there. It all has to do with you. What are you going to do about it? Because unless you do something about it to make it better, then you lose your right to complain. You either do something about it or zip it. It's plain and simple. So what's the underlying cause of the attitude? Notice what are the consequences of that bad attitude, how it impacts everybody else, how it impacts your assistants, your employees, and your patients. What is really the, the effect of that and the impact of that? I had a student in my class about a week ago, and she said, you know, it's interesting, she said, that you talk about attitudes and, and your thoughts and your beliefs, because my husband happens to be a chiropractor. No. He said, my husband happens to be a cardiologist, she said. And he was, um, uh, one of his patients came out after seeing him, and he called me to the side and said, your husband, the cardiologist, was scolding me. He was scolding me and scolding me and scolding me, telling me how bad the extra pounds I've added were to my heart and my health. And what I want to know, he asked this woman, his wife, the cardiologist's wife, who's going to scold him for adding all those pounds? Yeah, that attitude carries a long way, doesn't it? How does it impact how does it impact everything about you in your life? And the, the most remarkable thing is that you've got a choice. You can choose to focus on positive things, on the things that you have to be grateful for, on the goodness in your life. My heaven, for heaven's sakes, you have only one life to live, that we know for sure anyway. Are we going to spend it soured by our attitudes? Or living joyfully because we choose to manage them effectively? It's all up to you, because whatever you focus on expands. And if your attitude is always to focus on the bad things, well, guess what? More of that's going to come your way. You can also use a behavioral strategy where you can acknowledge the attitude whenever you're feeling that bad attitude and simply address it and say, you know what, attitude? I know why you're here. I know I've got some issues I've got to work on. But you know what? Because I have the right and, and the, the power to change my internal state, I say to you, you can stay or you can go, but you have my permission to leave. That simple statement, acknowledging the cause or the underlying cause of the attitude, bringing it out to the surface, releasing it and letting it go, can work wonders. That simple little statement can make all the difference in the world. One of the biggest things you need to upgrade are your beliefs. Because the beliefs that you hold to be true literally will govern your living experience. It will design and create the life that you have. 
What is a belief anyways? I was, I'm always so surprised when I ask my students and my trainees, what is a belief? Oh, well, a belief is something you say, oh, it's a belief is like something like you, know, you believe. Yeah, what is a belief? You know, what is it? If this is the one thing that is going to define your living experience more than anything else around, anything else within you, then we better know how to define it. A belief, really simply stated, is a statement you, you make to yourself that you hold to be true. It doesn't have to be true for everyone, but as long as it's true for you, guess what it is. If you're saying, oh, nobody really respects chiropractors out there in the world today, then you know what? It's true for you, because you will know there's a whole bunch of chiropractors who are thriving. If you believe that this economy is not going to help you to, to double or triple your own income, it will be true for you. So we need to start thinking about what are the things that we have in our lives? What are we lacking? If it's going to be in your health, if it's going to be in love, in, mo in monies, in your business, what's lacking? Because the moment you define what's lacking, you can certainly define that there is a belief fueling that lack. But you got to be courageous enough to identify that. Because if you're not courageous enough to identify it, then you're going to be living in denial, and denial is not going to get you anywhere. What you believe totally reveals your self-worth. So what is it, to, is it that, you, that you believe? Where do you find your lacks in life? Because good beliefs, they support what you want. Good beliefs open doors of opportunity. They're true most of the time, and they're true for most people. Ask yourself, if what I believe about my health, about my love, about my life, about my business, is that true for everybody? No. Hmm. Is it true all the time? Well, no. Hmm. You've got to question that. And you need to do away with those things that don't work for you or help you in the least bit. Good beliefs, as I said, open doors of opportunity. They feel good inside. They lead to resourcefulness. They propel you forward in a positive way and they deliver results. So, again, go back to your piece of paper. And we might not take full five minutes because this is a time crunch we're going through here, but enough time for you to write down at least one area of greatest lack. And then write down the belief statement that you, be that you believe supports it. Like with this problem, I'll never get better. How many times have you heard your patients say, I've got this, this illness and you know, I just don't think it's going to get better. So it's not going to happen. You've got to help them not believe that. Because I can bet that if you go online, they'll find thousands of people who have gotten better from that, and you know that. These things that you're learning for yourself are the very things that you're going to share with your patients, but not only your patients, with your loved ones. These are the things that I tell my children every day, day in and day out. You gotta think positive. You gotta shift your attitude. You gotta believe in things that will open doors of opportunities and take you to the next level. Because I don't care how complicated you wanna go or how complicated brain and mind research and neuroscience is gonna make this whole ordeal about, about human potential and if you say whatever, it comes down to very simple things. You change how you think, your attitude to the relief, and that will influence your actions and your life will get better. And? better. And? Oh, God, you're a really enthusiastic group, aren't you? Okay, I'm, I'm counting on you for a little bit more energy here. So get out your pen, get out your piece of paper, and after you write down the belief statement that supports it, then rewrite the statement so that it's more resourceful and opens a door of opportunity. Ready? Okay, get started now. And if you don't have any area of lack, I think you're not telling me the truth.
Your success is going to depend greatly on your participation in your life. This is just one little example here. The success your patients will achieve in their healing will depend on how they participate in their healing. You can show them the way. But it's a lot easier to show the way when you're that person. Where's your area of greatest lack? What's the statement you say to yourself that supports it? And now rewrite the statement for something better. seconds. Okay. Now the best way to integrate what you're doing right now is to pause for the cause. And all I'm going to ask you to do in a few moments is to simply find a comfortable position with your feet flat on the floor, hands on your lap, palms up or down. And then I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Let me explain first, and then you'll do it, okay? Hold on a second. I'm going to ask you to imagine a you in an area that's past your eyelids, away from your body. We call it the mental screen. It's where your mind pictures things. And you're going to picture a you already having overcome that limiting belief. So if it's about money or about your business or about love or health, you're going to picture yourself with money, with a thriving business, with a love of your life, with a health that you desire and deserve. And once you picture that image of you and you make it as clear as possible, and if you say you have problems picturing, which you don't, we don't have time to go into that right now, but if you say you do, then describe it to yourself in detail and color. And then I'm going to ask you to to step into that you in whichever way you can. That you who has already achieved, who has broken through this limitation and is already living that life that you so desire. A life of, of, that is thriving, a happy life, an abundant life, whatever it is that you're choosing to work on. And then once you're there and it all feels just right, I'm going to ask you to press your, the tips of your three fingers together. This is just a little anchoring mechanism. And lock in that experience of achievement. That experience of achievement because you'll find yourself feeling vulnerable throughout the day, day in and day out. I mean, that happens to all of us. It happens to me. I'm going through a whole change in my business and how we're going to move forward and different marketing strategies. How is that going to play out? And there's a little part of me that says, am I able to do this? Am I capable? Am I smart enough? Can I get this done? Of course I can. And I imagine myself in that position already having achieved and I lock in that finish. It feels so good. It feels so amazing to be that person with that freedom to be that way. And you allow your body, brain, and mind to memorize it, and you're going to repeat after me. Whenever I have a need or desire to feel, think, believe, or behave this way, all I need to do is press my three fingers together, and it will be so. So at any time during the day, in your weakest moment, you just pause for five seconds, ten if you want or longer. You close your eyes, take a deep breath and bring back this wonderful feeling of achievement and then get grounded again and say, I'm going to do this or better than that. I'm going to do this or what? God, you guys are great. I'm going to do this or what? Better than that. You got to say it like you mean it. If you can't even say it like you mean it, how are you going to make it happen? That's the kind of energy you need 
as a group of chiropractors moving forward and propel, propelling this, this whole industry forward. You've got to have that drive, that passion, that freedom to declare, I'm going to do this or better than this. Because that's what it's going to take. That's what it took all your successful chiropractors in this room. That's what it took for them. They make clear declarations every day of their lives. And you heard Larry say that earlier. So if it's working for him, why do you think it doesn't work for you? If it works for athletes and they go in, they picture themselves doing these things in a great way, why don't you think it doesn't work for you? Of course it does. You just got to do it. You're as special as they are. You're as wonderful as they are. You are as remarkable as they are. And you're even better if you believe that. You got to believe it. So we're going to do this exercise now. So let's get started. Find a comfortable position. You'll hear a very soothing sound in the background that is meant to help you to relax. Close your eyes. Take a deep belly breath. And release whatever tensions and pressures you're experiencing along the way. From head to toes, just release and let go. And allow your breathing to be deep, slow, and rhythmic. Take another deep breath. And while exhaling, relax your mind by thinking of something tranquil and passive. experience of that tranquil and passive scene, enjoying it fully and completely. What do you picture and hear and smell and taste in this wonderful tranquil and passive place? Take another deep breath, nice deep belly breath, and as you exhale, relax some more. Continue to breathe slowly, deeply, and rhythmically. Bring to mind the lack that you're concerned about. Confront it, deal with it, be open and honest. Now imagine a you on your mental screen having broken through that limitation and that lack. How would your be different and better? If you didn't have this limiting belief or thought, what doors of opportunity would open? How would your life continue to unfold and get better and better every day in every way? Because you're free to do so. You no longer have this limiting thought or belief holding you back. You are free. Take a few moments to observe your life unfolding right before your very eyes in ways that are so desirable and appealing. You look good. You look happy. You're thriving. You are successful. In whichever way you can imagine, step up to that image of you already have achieved this outcome and become one with that you. Fill your space within that image fully and completely and you and that future you are one and the same. How does it feel to be this you? To be free to move forward and upward. To be free to live a life of joy with great relationships, abundance, health, everything. Experience this new you and experience your life unfolding. Imagine yourself into the future and your life continues to get better and better. Or your love, or your abundance, or your business, whatever it is you're working on, gets better and better every day in every way. Now press your three fingers together and repeat after me. 
whenever I have a need or desire to feel, think, believe, or be behave this way, all I need to do is press my three fingers together and it will be so. I say it one more time. Whenever I have a need or desire to feel, think, believe, or behave this way, all I need to do is press my three fingers together and it will be so. Remember this feeling. Allow your body, brain, and mind to memorize this you so you can access it anytime you need or desire in the future. And as you feel comfortable and ready, you may open your eyes and we'll continue. We can lower the sound now. Did you enjoy that? This is, this is what we call modern day meditation. It's engaging, it's, it's, um, it's also infused with, with emotions and energy, and you're able to experience it. That experience is what we call E2 meditations, basically. You are experiencing an outcome as if it's already happened. You're like programming into the future in a past 10 cents. Someone a long time ago say, pray believing you have already received. Remember that? It applies here. And you need to do this consistently every day. Your thoughts, your attitudes need to support you and your beliefs need to support you consistently, persistently, congruently every single day. Your actions and behaviors, they have to support you as well. If you're going to really upgrade your life, you're going to have to upgrade how you behave and the actions that you undertake. It's not gonna happen any other way. Your behaviors will reflect your self-love. Zaren Burnett said, if you want to understand other people, don't waste your time deciphering what they say. Ignore a person's words. Instead, watch their behavior. Just pay attention, and they can't help but reveal themselves to you. Ain't that the truth? So you have an assignment during this conference time together to observe each other, which means you're going to have to be at your best behavior. And that's a good thing. Good behaviors result in good outcomes. Aristotle said, action reveals character. More often than not, when you pay attention, you'll notice the way a person does one thing is the way they do everything. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Congruency is key, my friends. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Are you congruently supporting what you want to actualize in your life, personally and professionally? Do your thoughts, attitudes, beliefs, behaviors congruently support you along the way? Because that's what it's going to take. And as we just did, you're going to find that when you already have these things working for you, that you will be able to integrate this even sure, in a more deeper way where it takes root inside you and becomes part of who you are by using more of your mind and mind potential and brain potential. The fact is that most people on the planet, they're either conscious on the outer conscious levels when they're functioning, their brain is functioning at beta frequencies, or they're unconscious and asleep. Very few people on this planet have learned to transform their subconscious into inner conscious. To be able to think in the most creative ways within the slower frequencies of alpha. To be able to solve more problems, come up with more ideas, to kick their life up a few notches by being able to use more of their brain potential and their mind and to be able to utilize their mind in a way that really brings great results. So we're going to do one short meditation before we close. It's called the mirror of the mind technique. And the same way that we did, you're going to go into this meditative process. Let me explain this first. 
And once you're in this meditative process, I'm going to do a special 10 to 1 countdown to deepen further within. Then I'm going to ask you to create an image of your current reality, the way your life is right now. We'll make it a bigger, broader picture this time. How do you picture your life right now? What's the reality that you have? Why is it like that? And then I'm going to ask you to erase that image and then to be able to create an image of what you want to have in place. The first image will go into a blue frame where you're studying your current reality and being really honest with yourself. You're then going to move that frame slightly towards your left just to give spatial distinctions with your inner workings. You change the frame to white and you picture the outcome image at which you're going to lock it in with your alpha anchor or three fingers technique. I'll guide you along the way, but I want you to become aware of these things. There are some elements that are going to empower you to achieve anything, and that is your desire. How much do you desire to make anything happen? That is your choice. If you only have a wishy-washy desire, you're going to have a wishy-washy outcome. Your desire needs to be intense. You know what that's like. Go back to your personal history. You've had times when you made things happen because you desired it so much. You made it happen. How much do you believe? These are energies we're talking about. I'm not talking about the statement to believe. Like there's no good jobs out there. There's no good you know, whatever out there. That's a statement to believe. I'm talking about the energy believe. That energy inside you that says, I believe, I desire, I expect this to happen. The energy of belief is different than the statement to believe. How much do you believe that you will achieve greatness, that your business will thrive, that your love will be the best, that your health would be perfect? How much do you believe that? Because if you don't believe it, my friends, it's not going to happen. And you know, based on your history, what that kind of intense belief is, feels like inside you. You can't describe desire. You can't describe belief, expectancy. Expectancy because they're energies, spiritual energies that are within you, but they make everything happen. And they need to be there because they make dreams come true. It's like love. If I ask you to describe how much do you desire this outcome, whatever you're thinking of, and I want you to pick a goal to work on with this exercise, you'll say, a lot, this much. You can't tell me because you can't describe subjective spiritual energies. Tell me how much you love your partner, your husband, your lover, your wife. Oh, I love them like, wow, well, I feel like, wow, oh, God, like, a, you can't say it, but you know what it feels like. You're going to engage your visualization because that defines your current reality and your imagination because that creates the, the future that you want to actualize. And after this, you're going to persistently pursue this. You're going to have tenacity and persistence along the way. And you must be congruent. You've got to walk your talk. You need to ask yourself the questions. What is it I want to do? When do I want to achieve it? Commit to it? Oh, when? Who's going to enjoy, enjoy the journey with me? Where will I be when it happens or it actualizes? How is it going to make my life different and better to be that person? Why? What is your deep why? Why do you want to have a thriving business? Oh, because I want more money in the bank? Really? Is that why? Why do I want to help people? Because I want to feel better about myself? Really? I don't think so. Why do I want the love of my life? Why do I want good health? What's your big why? And then you're going to be observing the feedback that comes your way. After this exercise, in the days to come, you're going to notice that something's going to be changing or internally or externally. Doors will open or doors will close. When the doors close, do not judge this feedback as good or bad. Just know that it's the universe giving you an indication as to where and how to take your next step what to do next. And then you go back into your little meditation, you make some adjustments and how you picture things or how you feel and then you go at it again. Don't ever judge feedback. It's just information to guide your next move. And when you have really big projects, take it a step at a time. If I had to reduce, you know, let's say 100 pounds, I'm not going to picture myself at my ideal weight and size because I don't believe it. And if I don't believe it, it's not going to happen. 
I can believe I can reduce two pounds a month, 24 pounds a year, 50 in two years, 75 in three, or 104. I can believe that. And then that's what you do. But in the back of my mind, I always have that goal in mind of 100 pounds or better. Or better. Okay? You want to do the exercise? Yeah? Do you have a goal selected? Okay. Pick a good one. Because doors will open. Things will happen. This is where the magic begins. This is a technique that saved my life, basically. Because it taught me how to think in ways that really make great things happen. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for your profession. What you do gave me my life back. You can do this for so many people. And I know you are. But there's still people out there that need you. But you got to step up to the plate. you got to be that person. Because you deserve to have it all. And better than that. Okay? So find a comfortable position. <sighs> Close your eyes. Take a deep belly breath. And while exhaling, relax your body once again from head to toes, releasing and relaxing tensions and pressures along the way. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly and rhythmically. Take another deep belly breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat the number two, three times and relax your mind. By thinking of a tranquil and passive scene. Experience that scene fully and completely with all of your mental senses. Be in the experience. You can always do this anytime you feel chaotic or stressed out. A 10 second pause into your favorite relaxing scene is all you need to do to turn chaos into flow. Take another deep belly breath and as you exhale, relax even more. I'm going to count from 10 to 1. On each descending number, feel yourself going deeper within, deeper in thought, in a more deeper relaxed state. 10, 9, feel that you're going deeper and deeper, a descending feeling. Eight. Seven, six, deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. At this time, create a mental picture in, on your mental screen with a blue frame around it that denotes your current reality. It could be a small scene or a large scene. There's great flexibility here. A person or many people. And just study your current reality for just a few moments because this is what you're leaving behind. This is what you're moving away from. But you acknowledge why it's like this, what's going on, your thoughts, your attitudes, and your beliefs, and how they've supported it up to now, but no longer. No longer are you going to do to to support this. Now erase that image in the blue frame with your imagination. Move that blue frame towards your left. Change the color of the frame to white. And now project within the frame the outcome that you desire. Elaborate it. Make it detailed. Give it color and action. What is it that you want to achieve? When 
be courageous to say when you want to achieve this. Commit to an out, to a time. Where will you be when this happens? Who's going to be enjoying the journey with you? Your family, your coworkers, your patients? How will it make your life different and better? Imagine your, your life unfolding, moving into the future and how everything can to get better through time. And why? Why is this important to you? Why? Your big why. Build within yourself such great desire. I desire this. I know I can make this happen and I will. And I expect it to happen this way or better. Now, however you imagine, step into that image of you, already actualized and achieved. Become one with it. Feel how good it is to be this you. Feel how amazing it is to be so accomplished and successful, so happy to be thriving and flourishing every day in every way for the rest of your life. It's a good feeling, it's a good life, it's a good you. This is you, it's just a matter of time. You will achieve this or better than this. Now press your three fingers together and say to yourself, whenever I have a need or desire to feel, think, believe, or behave this way, all I need to do is press my three fingers together and it will be so. Allow your body, brain, and mind to own this you. And whenever you think of anything that doubts, that doubts you in any way, whenever you feel weak or vulnerable, immediately press your fingers together, close your eyes, and remember this you. You will make this happen or better than this. As you feel ready, you may open your eyes, feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to have an amazing experience these next few days with your colleagues, friends, partners, assistants, co-workers, everybody in this room. We can lower the music now. I just want to say in closing that I have had such an honor to be here with you today. If there's anything I can leave you with as I walk out of this room, that will really make a difference in your life. And then something I would tell my very, very loved ones, my children and husband, the people I work with, the people I, I attend to, is you, you stick to it. You be persistent and congruent about how you think, keep it positive. About your attitudes, keep them great and open and wonderful. About your beliefs, let them open doors of opportunities and your behaviors, let them support you along the way. Because you know, and I know, that you can have it all or better. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed being with you. You guys are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.